I wouldn't say that I'm particularly picky when it comes to night vision housings, but for the longest time, there hasn't been anything that perfectly checked all the boxes for me. I ran panel bridged PVS 14s for quite a while, and while I liked it, the weight was a bit annoying and it wasn't great ergonomically. I never switched to a dedicated housing as I really didn't want to compromise the modularity and features that came with the panel bridge. Recently, something has finally hit the market that addresses this problem. This is the Mod 31 Night Fighter MG by Night Vision Plus. This does about every single thing you could want a bino housing and bridge system to do while weighing less than a PVS 31A. Before I start, I want to clear some things up. Please remember that this is a housing, not a full goggle. As housings are how you interact with your tubes, opinions are going to be a bit subjective depending on an end user's use case. My perfect housing may not be your perfect housing. I did receive this housing for free. I don't do payment for reviews, nor do I sign contracts that limit my opinions, I just received the product. Feel free to ask any questions about this process if you're concerned. The Mod 31 is an American-made injection molded polymer housing. There are multiple variants of the Mod 31 in both manual gain and auto gain flavors. I have the Mod 31 manual gain with panning and limo. The Mod 31 has extremely simple controls. Clicking on the battery cap powers the tubes. Clicking it again turns the tubes off. Directly above the power button is the gain control knob. Turning the knob right adjusts the gain down. Turning the knob left adjusts the gain up. The gain circuit is controlled by an analog potentiometer, giving it a very reliable and smooth adjustment. There are no jumps between gain profiles, and the housing remembers the gain setting it was left at when turned off. The power button sits on the battery cap. This device takes a single CR123A and gets around 20 to 25 hours of battery life in my experience. The bridge features a Limo 2-pin port for external battery packs. At the top of the bridge sits a metal dovetail shoe. At the back of the bridge are two small spots for bungee hooks. This housing has articulating pods with IPD stops and auto shutoff. When a pod is stowed, it turns off. Along with articulating, the Mod 31 can pan, making it one of the only purchasable bino housings on the market that can do both. This lets you quickly adjust your field of view from 40 degrees to 55 degrees with standard lenses. NV Plus offers both PVS-14 lens and ANVIS lens versions of these housings. I currently have Fuji PVS-14 objectives and key optic PVS-14 eyepieces installed along with two Elbit Omni-8 tubes, but I have used both. To change glass type, you just need to swap out the individual pods. The pods can be topped off with a Mod 14 battery pack to turn a pod into a lightweight monocular. While this feature isn't fully unique to the Mod 31, its bridge system is. The Mod 31 is part of an insanely modular family called the Mod Nod system. By removing a single screw, you can remove a pod without it losing perch. These pods can be replaced with thermal dovetail mounts for dual band, PVS-14 compatible J-arms, and more. If you want to use one of the pods as a lunar monocular, you can simply reattach it to another powered bridge. It's hard to explain how insanely modular this system is. I would spend a moment browsing the website to check it out. Everything is modular several times over. All right, to kind of quickly demonstrate how insanely modular this thing is, uh, you can kind of see its configuration right now. We have ANVIS glass on the left side and on the right side, we have normal ground coated PVS-14 glass. Um, and on one side, we have the normal screw uh, for the pod removal on the other side we have the thumb screw for the pod removal um, so currently if I want to remove one of these pods without a tool I'll literally just twist on this and you can also use this to adjust the uh, tension on the pod if you want to twist on it until it goes free pull out and as you can see the pod comes clean off the contacts are all there you don't have to worry about rewiring or anything so we'll set this down here this is a FLIR breach uh, and to run dual band all we have to do is put it right in the spot, run that screw right through again, tighten down, and boom, we're good to go. Remember, power on this is going to be run by its own battery, doesn't run power through it, but now you have an analog tube on your left eye, your thermal on your right eye, you can swap it, vice versa, and you also can run another one of these on there, you literally could swap it in the field if you want to, articulates everything. And uh, yeah, so this is a mini rail mount. He includes these um, with the pre-orders and uh, you can see you can adjust it from left to right, which is pretty neat. You have a lot of access of movement on there. And yeah, it's, it's honestly incredible that we can run, uh, use a like traditional bino style bridge, you know, not like a, a powered bridge as well, where you have power in your controls maintain the same, but also run dual band all without any tools do it completely in the field. It's just quite slick. All right, unscripted section with the Mod 31. Let's first kind of talk about uh, what I like about it. Um, then let's talk about, you know, the good, the bad. Then um, 
let's talk about uh, kind of cool things I like to see with, uh, you know, with the technology that's in this. Um, or stuff that's kind of already iterated. You know, just typical extrude shoot style ramble. Okay, first of all, I just freaking love this thing. It is, I, I know I'm biased to it because it's totally like my type of housing. I kind of thought for a while I'd want aluminum, but like this is totally my type of housing and I love it. First of all, uh, something I first want to kind of talk about, I feel like a lot of like um, lightweight articulating housings generally have these very weak articulation points and this is really well designed. It's a lot of contact, it's very rugged, very secure. It's not like 31As or the, you know, even the Argus 1431s where you see them breaking all the time. This is a very good design, um, very strong. You can kind of see if you can get a close up on it. It's got a lot of surface area. It's got a lot of contact. It's got a beefy bolt going through there. It's well designed and I don't know. I just very much like that. Like how the whole system's analog. I've had a lot of issues. Um, not a lot, but enough in the past with uh, like kind of digital style controllers inside, like with the Jerry 31s, uh, where sensors get weird and weird things happen. Everything in this is just analog uh, when it comes to electronics. Um, and I love that. It's just great. It's just a lightweight housing that works. It's like not gimmicky. And I mean, some people considering panning gimmicky. I don't. I use panning all the time, and it just it just works. I love that, and it doesn't feel like I have a brick strapped to my head. Because the cool thing with the, like the panel bridge is when you put it on your head, it's like, oh shoot, I have more field of view. You know, I can take one off of my friend. It's just you know what's on your head, and uh, like they weigh <laughs> a panel bridge setup can weigh as much as literal quads. You know, like GPMVG 18s or APMVGs. Like they are heavy, and. Um, well, they're not, it's not horrible. You know, like I've ran quads before. I ran panel bridge for a long time. And if you get your counterweight set up, you'll be fine. Less weight's always better. And this just, this just feels nice and lightweight. Feels like a nice lightweight pair of binos. Um, dovetail design's great. Feels nice and rugged. Clicks in super well. I love the uh, tension or sorry, the bungee corded things. They're so sleek. Um, so intentional and i love how all the tension on this is like adjustable you can adjust the tension of the articulation you can adjust the tension of the panning back here see that screw so if you want to make it harder to do this you can just tighten that it's just so well thought out uh and so well done so absolutely love it um and it's super just super cool um, so from a builder side, uh, I, I build devices for myself. I really haven't done anything on, on it, you know, a commercial grade side. Um, it's honestly really nice to build with, um, really just pop tubes in the pot tubes into the pods. Um, there is no low battery light indicator. I know some people really like that. I think it's kind of nice to have, but there isn't one just to keep it lightweight. But, uh, the, um, tube retainer has nice threads that are easy to catch and get in there compared to a lot of other um like the pvs 14 pvs 14 tube retainer threads drive me crazy um i know with like a proper tool it's not horrible but these are really great i really like them uh building it's really nice and easy it's cool uh the this nerdy stuff that i think most of you guys aren't going to care too much about um most binos are now like this but this is like we call it plug and play uh with the egac so you can use a standard 14 pigtail for manual gain and just pop it right in um you don't have to do any like three pin uh or two pad uh two pad three pad um pigtails any conversions literally just take stock bvs 14 um tubes and you can throw them click in the manual gain it works just fine manual gain circuits awesome uh and it, the uh numbers read great you're gonna get full gain range out of your tube um which I know that's kind of weird for me to say, but we've, we've had some experiences recently with people uh, getting like weird housings from other companies where their gain values aren't quite right on the housing, but the range is perfect on there. Also the uh, battery, it's a three volt, you know, it's a standard CR123A, but the uh, bridge takes the power down to like 2.5 to 2.7 volts in my experience. So it keeps it nice and low just to kind of help with tube battery life and prevent anything bad from happening to your tube. So those are two nice things kind of coming as a builder that I really appreciate. Um, I like, I wish I could explain more how much I just like this housing. It's just great. It just, man, like where, where has this been for um, my life? Now let's kind of talk about some of the things that aren't, uh, too great before we kind of talk about cool future things and just, I kind of ramble more. Um, so one of the first things that I would say that in my opinion is probably the biggest issue with this is getting one. 
these are hard to get <laughs> so you can go and buy one right now the lead time advertised is six to twelve weeks i believe um but in my experience i've seen most people say it's like closer from 10 to even like 20 weeks or so um and that is a little sad and a little frustrating i wish that there's better logistics to getting these um it just takes a long time that's the issue uh if there's anything i would say that i'd like to see night vision plus handle better uh, or even just like work on more um it would actually just be logistics getting these in stock because they're never in stock you always have to pre-order them and they're expensive um for like a full featured bino housing i'd say they're you know kind of the average to the lower end price for full featured but they're still expensive this is still you know a sixteen hundred dollar uh might be seventeen hundred dollar housing you know that is not super cheap so that is like my one issue with this is they're hard to get because the lead time is so so long and longer than generally quoted you know which it, if you know what you're getting into lead time isn't a big deal but if, when it goes over the lead time that that's a problem um and they you do have to pay up front so those are two things to be you know to know about this but um yeah i, I would i would just say that so Keep aware of that. Keep that in mind. Lead time is long on these, uh, but they're great. They are fantastic housings when you can get them. Um, so yeah, and I said $1,700, right? So that is a little bit more on the expensive side uh, when it comes to, not nah, actually, like that sounds like it is, but when you took it into, like, th take it on the bigger picture and be like, well, how much does, you know, a MH1 cost? It starts at like two grand, you know, how much does a... ARMV, uh, wait, MGA, that's what it is. Like those start at like 2,300 bucks. So I guess this is still like three to $500 under the average cost. It's just, you're gonna be waiting for it. So sorry, I wish I had a script for that, but we don't. So you're gonna, it's just gonna be a little long. That is the first big issue. And um, while it's not even like really an issue, it's just something I feel like I should talk about just cause I know a lot of people that still are waiting on their housings from Night Vision Plus. Um, Here's the two smaller things. Every once in a while, I will have a small issue with a tube, this tube in particular flickering uh, when I'm articulating it or panning it. And uh, for a while I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Why does it happen to this? Then I realized I actually take this tube off all the time. And it was just the contacts there. I think I just got them a little dirty somehow. So I went in, I cleaned them up with just some alcohol uh, and boom, works fine. So I just thought that was worth mentioning. Um, the contacts in here, if you don't clean them after, you know, or if you get them dirty when you do a pod removal, uh, that can cause a little bit of flickering and kind of weird gain issues. But well, since I've cleaned it up and before I took the pod, like the pods off, I have had zero issues with any of that. Um, last uh, thing I'd like to talk about, and I know I talked to another uh, really, really great builder that talked about this. Um, and uh, it was that the pods here, they do not have metal inserts for the screws. You screw directly into the plastic. That doesn't sound like a big deal. And if you have it built by a good builder, it really isn't. But the fact that this is kind of a cool modular system where you could take this off and put a mono topper on there, I really feel like they should be using metal inserts. And like, it's gonna be a few more grams, yeah, but it's, I think it's okay. I think it's worth it. Or maybe give it an option where you could do one or the other. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like that is a concern on my end. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but the guy that I talked to about this is one of the, the best night vision builders out there, in my opinion. Um, uh, and I just think it's, if he thought it and I thought it, I think it's definitely worth mentioning. Um, those are really the only issues though. Um, and the biggest ones, obviously just, you know, getting one is hard and that's, that's, that's unfortunate, but Besides that, like, man, I love this thing. I think it looks really good. I think it's a cool looking housing. Bridge looks great. I think the fact that I can take a tube off is so cool. And I really love that for demonstrations because it's like kind of cool to show people like the, it's a little less overwhelming to explain night vision to someone when they just see a single tube. Um, oh shoot, this really isn't an issue. This is more of a like a uh, thing I would like to see happen kind of going with that. I wish they sold the power bridges by themselves. And honestly, I think that if you emailed the guy that makes these, uh, he would 100% be happy just to sell one alone. So that's not even a real complaint. I just think it'd be kind of cool to see them listed on the website, just kind of advertise that modularity a little bit more. But like, my goodness, I think it's so cool the amount of things that this guy's figured out. 
um, like using the PVS 14. Let me just wait a sec. I'll grab mine. PVS 14 uh, housing. This is one I just have laying around. Um, like the he found a way where he uses these two pins on here, which is generally used for a completely useless feature. He found a way to use that to deliver power over a powered J arm. So you could take one of these housings, use a like a J arm on it, you know and attach that so the power goes through the j-arm and it can power the contacts on there that's so ingenious it's so cool you once again have to have a special you know uh upper housing but you can use a standard lower housing uh, i just think that's so freaking neat um it's just like man you got such brilliant ideas let's just get these things pumped out faster i think it's just a one-man show but uh that, that i don't know so Super cool housing, fantastic. Just so many things on this where I'm like, how come no one's done this before? It just seems so obvious. Oh, and the last thing, you guys probably saw this. Uh, it, this comes with the lightweight diopters, which is cool. I currently have the, the different diopters for reasons you guys will probably see um, in a few months, but, or actually pretty dang soon, maybe next month, I'm not sure. Um, but you can come with the lightweight diopters and they you know, make it even lighter and look pretty cool in my opinion. I just, for right now, uh, I have the standard ones on. But uh, like, man, so many things are well thought out. It's such a cool housing. I just love it to death and I, I'm so happy to own one now. Um, if you are one of those people that, you know, are looking for the same reasons as me, this is by far the holy grail of like pano bridge panning housings in my opinion. Um, the MH1 did just come out with the panning housings. Like literally the script was written before the MH1 came out with that panning uh, things. I did adjust it. Um, and you know, this is 55 degree, in my opinion, 60 degrees, is just too much for pan. Um, and th that's per all personal preference, right? 55 is ideal for me. 60 is too much. I love 55 degree pan. This is just like the goat when it comes to like bridging binos, like my goodness, modular night vision goat. Um, and oh, last thing, uh, there always is new versions of this or like new iterations seems like it's coming out um recently the elite model so when i originally wrote the script i was like oh this is the flagship model it's actually not anymore there's the elite model uh and that has a built-in ir illuminator with kind of a cool different switch system um and uh so now if you're like oh man i wish that this had an ir illuminator i'm not a huge i like ir illuminators but it's not like a deal breaker for me it's also not something i like completely don't care about so i try to get one onto my helmet but not a deal breaker for me, but there is a version of this now that will have an IR illuminator on it. It's the elite model. Um, sorry, that was a whole bunch of things everywhere, but, uh, I'm really happy I could do a video on this. I'm so happy I have one. Um, and I definitely will be running these for a long time. Cause I really can't think of anything that I would do differently with these. Um, like maybe the IR illuminator, but I don't, I don't care that much for an IR illuminator. I love, I love these as is. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I might release a second just video of just me keeping on ranting on the B channel. I just don't want to keep this one too long. Um, that's it. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for getting me to this place. I might release a channel on my B channel as well, uh, kind of talking about it. I'll link the B channel, by the way, below, kind of talking about the journey. But like I literally, two years ago, I had a $250 like homemade night vision. I was like, dang, uh, night vision seems cool, real cool, but I don't think I'll ever own analog. And here I have, you know, Gen 3 analog duels and... It's very cool to kind of go on that journey. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, see you soon, hopefully.